guys. So based on a comment one of you left on my Sketchbox uh, April video regarding the Tangerine India ink, I realized that for my challenge, I didn't really use it as an inking tool itself. Not, not that anyone said, oh, you didn't use it as an inking tool, but I realized you guys might like to see that as well. So <laughs> being hyper literal, I inked a couple of tangerines I mean, I, I sketched a couple of tangerines and I'm going to ink those tangerines with a brush. Now, India ink has a shellac in it, so you don't want to use it in, um, say, a water brush, even if the color is beautiful. Same goes for acrylic ink. You want to use it with a, like a, like a, an actual physical brush with bristles or hair or you want to use it with a nib and I actually don't care for nibs I prefer brushes over nibs so I'm gonna go ahead and use a nib and I think what I wanted to do was oh shoot was um a combination of regular inking and then ink wash and like I just mentioned I, I just looked up some tangerines because I thought that would be a fun thing to ink a very sunny summery tasty thing to ink with tangerine ink and uh, I don't have a lot of green ink lying around. I do have some FW Sap Green acrylic ink, so I'm gonna use that for the stem. So first I'm going to ink the outlines, and then I can erase the pencils, and then I can do an ink wash. And I'm going to do an ink wash in the tangerine. So, Now one of the problems with these sort of lighter inks is that you can't always get the pencils out from underneath them. So um, it can make your pieces look a little bit muddy. Which is why as beautiful as this color is, it is not necessarily one I would have purchased to play with myself, but I am glad it was included. And I'm doing a pretty quick and messy inking job. I'm not really that concerned about it. It's a little bit watery as an in ink. Um, if you want a thicker ink though, you can just let it evaporate a little bit for like an hour or so. Don't forget to recap it. And that should solve some of your wateriness. And because it's very translucent, you can layer it to an extent to build up depth of color. So I'll go ahead and fill in that cut, um, the bottom of the cut tangerine right there. What is a little bit ironic is I just said I wouldn't buy something that is as light and translucent as this because you can still see the graphite underneath it, but I have some yellow uh, Bombay India ink. I think I got it on sale though. So, I don't know if that makes any difference. What's fun about these sort of quick gestural sketches is um, it's just, it's not, it's difficult to mess up, you know, like it doesn't really require a lot of finesse. It doesn't necessarily require a lot of um, control pretty much just some patience and some reference and some willing to make, willingness to make mistakes. So I really recommend that um, if you're looking to sort of change up your routine, you give this sort of thing a try. 
Now I'm going to let this dry, at least dry on the surface before I apply my FW ink. All right, so my tangerine isn't entirely dry, but it's dry enough that I can work around it. So this is FW acrylic ink. And acrylic ink and Bombay ink are very different. Um, and I'm not expecting them to play nice together. But there is a proper, there are a couple properties they both share. When wet, both of them are water soluble and can be blended, mixed, um, or extended using water to create light washes. Um, and when dry, both are permanent against water. So, that sap green is a really nice color. But I like kind of um, gray greens with a bit of yellow in them. There's something, to me, there's something very visually rich because they layer well. But we're not actually testing the FW. What we're doing is we're taking a look at how the PH Martins handles. And the side of the bottle used to say that you could put it in a, um, like um, an airbrush. Um, and the side does currently say that it is life fast and waterproof, pigmented India ink, holds a line without spreading, flows smoothly without tip drying, non-clogging and non-toxic. And I can say that in my experience with it, all of those hold true. So, um, I need to allow this to dry 24 hours before I erase it or I do an ink wash with it. But I prepared a sample yesterday um, and allowed it to dry. And I applied the ink very, very thickly in some areas. I don't know if you can see that. And less thickly in others. And I just wanted to demonstrate that once it's cured, I still have some green in my, in my brush. Let me get that out. I just wanted to demonstrate that once it's had a chance to cure, it will be waterproof. So if you want to do watercolors over it, you definitely can. So, even though it looks like there's some dirty going on. Actually, I have clean water in this thing. If I can get the blue out of the tip. I guess I blued myself. That should be good enough. Okay. So, nope, it's not. But the point, the point is, even though I'm scrubbing over this, because it's had a chance to fully dry, the orange isn't going anywhere. So, um, I'm going to grab an alcohol marker because it is not alcohol marker proof. And um, it will, if you scrub enough, it will um, smear. So these are some dots where the ink was heavily applied. And as you can see, with just a little bit of scrubbing, it started to move. So don't use your India inks with alcohol markers. It's not alcohol marker safe. It doesn't promise to be. Um, because it is shellac based, the alcohol in these markers will dissolve the binder, the solvent, the the drying agent in these. So um, they just don't play well together. And for best results, do not mix. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow when this is fully dried and I can do an ink wash with tangerine. See you guys then. All right, so my tangerine illustration has had time to fully dry. And the first thing I wanna do is erase those pesky pencil lines. And we'll see how well they erase out from underneath the tangerine ink. So I can already see that it's not going to erase. And that's not surprising um, because it basically acts like a sealant on top of the, the pencils. Um, if you want to be able to work with light colored inks like this and not um, have the pencils underneath, you need to use a light table. But I figured the first thing people would go for is just direct on paper pencil drawing. So that's the path I wanted to take since it seemed, you know, uh, the most common solution to the problem. Um, so I've got a cup of water and I've got my Bombay India ink. I'm going to plot a little bit, and I want to create ink wash. And there's um, a few ways I can do this. I can 
go ahead and drop a few drops on here and use a paintbrush. And I need to put the water away because the water is actually blue from brush out. Use this water here. I can um, go ahead and sort of start watering down my ink. Now you don't want your ink to get too dry because once it dries on your palette, you're not going to be able to reactivate it with water. That is one of the downsides of um, India ink. And I'm trying to water out or water down my India ink as much as possible while it's still wet because that's the only time you're really going to be able to achieve an ink effect. And if you're looking for an easier way to handle ink wash, I actually recommend using a watercolor instead. It is the technique I used for my chainmail bikini submission. I was very happy with how easy it turned out to be compared to traditional ink wash. You also get some lovely blooms, and I'm trying to encourage some blooms right now. Now, um, doing an ink wash in this fashion, I am losing some of the vibrancy that a tangerine would have even in the lighter layers because there should be yellow involved um, in the tangerine flesh rather than just white and orange. But I wanted to stick with as much as possible the tangerine ink that was sent to me since you guys ex did express an interest in seeing how it handled. Really, quite a few of you were like, I want to see how that ink works. So I am happy to oblige. Hopefully this will answer um, most of your questions, but if you still have questions that I wasn't able to cover, please leave a comment or um, shoot me an email um, or leave um, a message through the blog and I'll try to get back to you and try to show you what I missed out on. And another thing about ink wash is you can do a very gestural effect like this, or you can also, I mean, you can also do combinations. You can do very gestural that builds up into very detail, um, where in the earlier stages, you're encouraging blooms, you're um, encouraging bleeds, you're very loose and fast with the color. And then as, um, as you work the piece, it can become more detailed. That's usually what I do with my watercolor studies, in fact, is I try to work gestural at first. And see, I already noticed a problem with my work. Um, I didn't leave enough white areas. Um, and I could have done that with masking fluid. And to an extent, I can pick some of it up, but colors like this orange have staining properties. So they're going to stain the paper underneath anyway. Yeah, I want to put a little bit of um, orange tint in the pit. So I need to allow this to dry before I can make any further progress. And I see that I accidentally got some orange in that leaf. And that's, that's all right. So another thing I can do, since this is going to be a dual color, two color piece, is I can go ahead and actually paint the further leaf orange because the combination of sap green and orange should make a brownish color and that should push that into the distance. So I'm going to take a moment and let this dry and get back to you guys. Okay, so um, if it isn't dry, it has at least soaked in. And I'm going to switch tracks real quick. I actually need to shake this up and make sure it's closed. PSA, when you're dealing with inks of any sort that need shaking, please, please, please make sure the top is on firmly before you start shaking, lest you get ink everywhere. Ink that you'll be finding years later, ink that will get all over your drawings. If this hasn't happened to you yet, well, you're fortunate. Um, and hopefully my little warning will keep it from ever happening to you and you never have to deal with it. All right, so let's go ahead 
and that's going to be kind of dark. Burp, 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 burp. I learned so much, much watching some of those crafters videos because you can really make your palette almost anywhere as long as you've got a clean surface. So this is acrylic ink that I'm messing it with right now and um, I've watered it down a little bit which is totally feasible because acrylic ink is water soluble until it dries and then it is water permanent and I'm sure many of you know that but I like to repeat it for um, you know people who are just sort of getting started in art um, or maybe just you know researching uh, materials and they don't yet know um, quite as much as they will know someday so you know I like to cover that and I'm doing um, I want a bleed of dark into light so I am doing an unadulterated unwatered down um, wash on top while it's still wet of the acrylic sap green and I'm cleaning my brush out in between uses and even though this is a non-stick mat, I'm going to clean my acrylic ink off. And while it's wet, it's easy. You just use some water. All right, so I need to give that a moment to dry, lest it bleed. Well, actually, actually, let me show you guys something. And it'll not, can't fix it once I've done it. So if you want, oh, no, you're supposed to bleed. All right, what I want to happen is I want to encourage a shadowy bleed of green over here there we go that's doing it but to encourage it further I'm going to go ahead and dry out my brush a bit and add some more paint and sort of have it butt up against the orange there we go And I've been trying to mix more happy accidents into my work. And sometimes it looks good and sometimes it doesn't. But you know what? The only way you're going to find out what works for you is by experimenting. So on low stakes projects like this, I highly recommend you do so. Anyway, I'm going to let that sort of blend and mix. Because it's going to go, it should go, the pigment should move from areas of low water, like um drier areas to wetter areas and if you have too much water pooling which can happen you can just dab it up if you like all right now I'm gonna let that dry okay oh shoot <laughs> my cap is a little bit loose I guess I didn't do a very see this is why I told you guys make sure it's on properly because it took it took me by surprise so I'm going to apply another layer of ink wash and clean up some of the mess. So um, one of the differences between India ink and watercolor is India ink may be more staining. So you may not be able to lift it out as much as you would with um, if you were using just regular watercolor. So um, that's something to keep in mind, again, especially if you're interested in doing ink wash, because um, that ability to lift can really be a lifesaver if you're doing something like ink wash comics, for example, um, which, you know, it, it's one thing if you're working on one large illustration, um, but it becomes a lot harder when you're working on individual small panels. So the ability to lift can be a lifesaver. Um, and I'm pretty much just going in and darkening certain areas, enforcing the pattern in some of those. And I found that the India ink provided a bit of a resist for the, um, for the acrylic ink that I put on top that I wanted to encourage a bleed for. But I think that's that. Um, I hope my little demonstration of the um, tangerine colored Bombay India ink 
that came in my April basic sketch box. I hope that showed you guys what you needed to see, those of you who are curious about the product. Um, I also utilized this ink in the um, Sketchbox challenge. I'm not going to consider this a Sketchbox challenge. It was just a demonstration of the ink. I find that bottles this size tend to go a long way. I like the dropper. I find it very convenient to use. Um, and I find that it works well with both nib and with um, brush. Although, if you have pencil lines underneath, they are going to be a, become a permanent part of your illustration. You will not be able to erase them out from underneath. So that may be something to take in mind, keep in mind, especially with these lighter colors, because um, it does sort of dull down the illustration. It would look a lot more exciting and vibrant if I had been able to erase um, the pencil underneath. And that's not a ding against the ink. It's just a comment on um, utilizing my paper, my pencil, my ink appropriately. If I had done an underdrawing and then used a light table and then inked on a separate sheet of paper, which may not have been very feasible with this fluid watercolor paper. It would have been way less, you wouldn't know that there had been graphite. It would look like I had sketched it immediately in, um, in ink. So, um, back at Hilburn, I hope you guys found this demonstration useful. I hope you found it inspiring. Um, if you have any questions that are related to this particular topic, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to them. If you would prefer, you can email me, and that information is available on the Natosoup blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. So, um, have a great day, guys. I'll see you later. Goodbye.